Hi, this is Elaine. Today's bedtime story is called Max and Mimi, the Pussycats. Now, before we get started, I want you to make sure that you're really, really comfortable. So maybe move your hands, arms up in the air, stretch your legs, wiggle your feet. Move your back and your bottom until you get just into the right position. Make sure your head is supported. And your pillow is really comfortable. And now that you feel really comfy, you can start to really relax your body and your mind. And we do this to begin with by breathing. So if you've listened to me before, then you know exactly how to do this. So the first thing I want you to breathe in through your nose like this and out through your mouth like this. Once again, breathe in, breathe out. You have a go now. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Can you feel how your body feels just a little bit more relaxed than it just did a few seconds ago? You might find that your eyes have already closed and If not, you might choose to close them now. So are you ready for the story today? Max is black and Mimi's white. Max speaks French. Mimi speaks German. Max likes tuna, Mimi likes salmon. Max loves chasing mice and Mimi likes to climb high into the trees. Max and Mimi are besties, they've been friends forever. They love and support each other and will always be there for the other in times of trouble. Both love to play, have fun, eat and sleep in that order. This day it's early in the morning. And Max gets up from his bed and squeezes through the pet hatch in the front door. Outside he takes a big long stretch and goes for a wander. The air is crisp. It's a sunny winter's day. Max climbs up on the walls, jumps off roofs and finds a couple of little mice who are just waiting to be chased. He never catches them but it's still fun. And as Max is walking down through an old yard, he sees a little white mouse 
egging him on to give chase. The mice around here enjoy teasing him. So Max starts chasing as fast as he can over logs and runs, up across black tires and through windows of old cars and then down through a hole in the ground, down into a sewer. It's a bit dark and smelly in here, but Max keeps chasing along the sewer. It's getting a bit darker now, and although Max can see very well in the dark, it's getting harder now. And then he stops. The mouse is nowhere to be seen. So he huffs like this pulls up his shoulders and starts to retrace his steps back to where he came from. But where did he come from? There are many passageways and Max isn't sure which one he came in from. So he makes his way through one tunnel. And after a while, he realizes that this one is a dead end. So he goes back and takes another tunnel. This one is much longer and it goes nowhere either. By this time, Max is getting very tired and decides to lie down and have a little nap. He's quite comfortable and relaxed and thinks that if he just has a rest for a little while, it will recharge his energy and he will find the right tunnel soon. So he crawls up into a little ball of black fur has a big yawn and very soon he's moving into a very, very deep sleep. So deep. and then outside in the garden, but he's nowhere to be seen. She starts to climb a few trees, most of which do not have any leaves at the moment, but she finds one that's a bit more bushy and spends the morning jumping and scratching her way up and down, trying to find Max. By lunchtime, She's quite tired and decides that she too would like to have a bit of a nap. She makes her way in, back through the pet door and curls up into bed, feeling so sleepy now. Mm. Feeling like she just wants to move into a nice deep sleep and she'll keep looking for Max later. Deeper, deeper into sleep. By mid-afternoon, Max wakes up feeling refreshed with lots of energy. 
though he could do with something to eat, he thought. Okay, he said to himself, I've got to find the way out now. Feeling more energetic, Max runs through the tunnels for nearly an hour and eventually he finds an exit up to the outside. But the gate is locked. Max tries to squeeze through the gate and with a bit of shoving and pushing and then pulling, he manages to squeeze his whole body through and can now smell the fresh air. It's very cold and there is snow on the ground. Max can see that the sun is setting and realises that he's been away for a long time. As he looks around, he doesn't recognise anything. He has no idea where he is. So he starts walking, jumping up onto walls, hoping to meet someone that can tell him where he is. Not long, he meets a sheep called Betsy eating grass at the side of the road. Bonjour said Max, practicing his French. I wonder if you can help me, I'm lost. Hello there, said the sheep. Where do you have to go? Uh, to my house, said Mac, where Hannah, my owner, and Mimi lives. Where is that? said Betsy. Um, it's near the fruit trees at the side of an old barn, said Max. Feeling a bit silly because he really isn't sure where he lives. Well, there are lots of fruit trees and lots of barns everywhere. Which one? said Betsy. No, said Max, now starting to feel a little worried. He had no idea the name of the place or the street that he lived in. Sorry, said Betsy, I can't really help you then. So Max continues walking. Walking, walking, walking. Meanwhile, back at his house, Mimi had woken up and was getting really worried. She noticed the sun is about to set where is Max? She doesn't know what to do or where to go. But not long after, Hannah came home. Hannah's the owner of Mimi and Max and she notices that Max is missing. She checks in all the same places that Mimi had. and then got her bike out of the shed, put Mimi in the basket and set off looking for Max. Max! she shouts, Max! But there was no response. Meow! said Mimi. Come home, Max! continues to get darker and Mimi was getting really sad. What if we can't find him, she thought. 
What if he's lost forever, my best and dearest friend? Max, shouts Hannah, Max. She turns off the road and follows a little path down towards the yard and then another path out of the yard towards the river. Max, she calls Max. Max is walking and climbing and jumping and his paws are starting to hurt. He has no idea where he's going, but he knows he has to keep going. He gets to the river and is able to have a drink as he watches the sun set lower in the sky. And then he hears it. Max! It was faint at first, but it was definitely his name. Oh my goodness, he thought. They're looking for me. That's Anna. He tries to find where the voice is coming from and climbs up the nearest tree to see if he could see them. He cries, meow, meow, and then sees Hannah and Mimi standing next to her bike on the other side of the river. He jumps up and down in the tree and shouts, Meow, he said, meow. Mimi hears him first, then sees him and she meows back, meow. Then Hannah saw him, Max, she shouted. What are you doing over there? Wait there, I will come and get you, she said. Hannah jumps on her bike. There was Mimi in the basket and rides over the bridge, making her way towards Max. Looking bedraggled, dirty and smelly, Max didn't really look like Max, but Mimi didn't care. And she hugs and cuddles him. And Hannah lifts them both up and puts them into the basket. It's now starting to get dark and Hannah is riding as fast as she can. She arrives home, the lights are on and her family are out on the porch waiting for them. Hannah takes Max into the laundry to give him a wash. Drying him with a nice soft towel. And he had a big bowl of his favourite tuna waiting for him. He is so hungry. Soon, both cats are tucked up in bed. So where did you go? said Mimi. And as Max started to tell her the story, he found himself unable to keep his eyes open. And he gave her a big yawn. I'm so tired. So 
so exhausted. All he wanted to do now was to sleep. So sleepy. So tired. Going deeper into sleep. You can tell me in the morning, said Mimi. And she snuggled up, so happy to have her friend back, so happy everyone was safe. Soon her eyes were also heavy and feeling drowsy. And she was asleep too. So sleepy, so deep. Night night.